Well, hello everybody. This is Danny back from Deep South Homestead. Guys, this is trip number two. Number Mr. Two. Mickey's back today. From, back from the hills of Tennessee yeah, with another load. With another load. Yes, and sir. this time he brought specialty stuff. Now, you see what this looks like right here? This is what happens to wood when it oxidizes. This is just what it looks like. Now, this is not what it looks like when it's first cut. This is after you just, if you're not paying attention to your material and you're just letting it set. This is what happens. But now, I want you to look at this. This is after it's been planed and you take the oxidized part off of it. Then this is the beauty of the wood. But now what will happen is, if you're not staying on what you're doing in a couple hours... You get, That's right. You it'll get turn, this right back. The sunshine will make it look just like that. The sunshine will do it right back to it. So we're going to be probably moving pretty quick with this. But I'll let Nikki tell you the difference between a woodworker's wood and sawmilling wood. And, I, and I'll say this, Mr. Danny, that it's all about reading the log. And yes. you know as, a, as a, you know, you have plenty of experience yes. with logs. It's all about reading the log. So when I... Every individual log that I'll put up there, I'm looking for that character. Mm -hmm. Now, for most sawmills, this is what you're going to wind up with when you're just sawing cedar. You're going to yep. wind up with straight grain. you got a little cathedral in the middle. As a woodworker sawmill, this is what I'm looking for in that log. I'm looking to bring out the most character in each mm -hmm. piece of lumber. Uh, you know, to me, for a lot of folks, this is fine. Oh, yeah. I, like, I like this. Yeah, I, like, that's, I like the character. Yeah, when I saw that character in it there, that's that's kind of what I... Uh, and, and here's another piece that's got a lot of character in it too right there. That's what I'm looking for when I'm trying to build a piece of furniture that that has that talks back to me. Heirloom quality. Yes, heirloom pass quality. Pass it on down. Heirloom quality. Yes. I mean, that's just... That is... That's just magnificent. I mean... And I've got good. a couple more boards I could bring you if you've got a project for it. Oh yeah, definitely. It'll be something to go with the cabin there. That's for sure. Um, I'm and, uh, just uh, the special order log that you requested. Yeah, we have a special order log that um, we've requested, and uh, I actually have an old shotgun that was mine when I was a small child that my dad had. Uh, first gun I ever shot in my life. I have that gun now. It has a broken stock on it. And Mr. Mickey is going to work with me on getting a piece of walnut, and I am going to custom build my own gun stock. <laughs> well, I've got it in the kiln. Okay. It should be coming on the next trip. Good. This little project, you yeah. know, the gun stock, and the little katop over here. Yeah. So you're going to be busy. I'm going to be busy with <laughs> Not specialty. counting the barn. <laughs> no, this ain't counting the barn. Yeah, this is like, what do what me and Ms. Wanda call it? Rainy day stuff. The only yeah. problem is I never have a rainy Not day. Not much rain. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> Not much rain, but... um. Let's just move over. I'm going to let Mr. Mickey show you another specialty wood that he brought down that I'm just, I'm in love with this as much as I am this right here. And let's take a look at it now. So this is another example of what we were talking about, about how the proper way to put a board down is you always have your heart go down. If you're doing a floor, if you're doing a wall, you'll have the heart, which if you can see the, the circles in each board, the center of it is going to be the heart. And so you always want to keep the heart down or you want to keep the heart against the wall because you can imagine if you turn this board over, the natural cups are going to try to come away from the wall or come up from the floor. Some stuff I hate to just put on a barn, you know? I'm sitting there thinking, you know, what, you know what cabinets this would look like for cabinets? Oh, I know. I know how many cabinets I've put in houses yeah. down with poplar. Now, you know, most people use the poplar because they paint it. It's a good paint board. It's a board. good paint board. It's not really good for staining. You know, oh, it's harder to stain than, yeah. than most other ones. Poplar is just a good lumber. That's up there. It's fine. It's just a good lumber. Yeah, that's Thing about it is stuff will build you only an hour or two, you know. Uh, Doesn't take no time. Take no time. This has been stuck on my truck thirty six hours. And that's that's about as fast as it is to start making that white fungus in between. Oh yeah. But as long as we stick it, that stuff will disappear pretty quick. Yeah, that's the 
heard that the best wedding present you could ever give is a sawmill. Now, I once heard that. I, that come from a pretty good, pretty good source. I can almost believe that yeah. in the beginning, when you first starting out and you're young, a sawmill last you your lifetime if yes. you take care of if it. If you take care of it. And it's endless of what you can do. It's endless. But yeah. on the sticker part, you know, and I, I take, I really take pride in my stickering because the way you sticker it is going to be the final product of that board. Yeah. If you want it to be nice and flat and straight, you got to sticker it that way for yep. the dry. And a lot of important facts about stickers is these have to be dry. Yes. If you use a green sticker on green lumber, you're going to have stains that will not well, come out. Well, not only that, a fungus will likes to it's grow gonna, under it. It's going to grow that white fungus. That white it's going to grow the mold. And it'll rot right and there. That's exactly where that sticker line was. And yep. you'll always see that sticker line yes. once it gets stained. That's right. You can't even plane it out of it. Nope. It goes too deep. It goes too deep in there. You're correct. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people, these stickers that's going between us here, they'll just set a sawmill up and take the slabs. And they'll just run down through there and just whack up little one inch or one inch and a half wide. Some of them be an Scrap. inch thick. Scrap. An inch thick, some of them an inch and a half thick, some of them three quarter inch thick, and they'll lay them all down through here and start stacking that lumber on top of it green. And when you do, your lumber looks just like this here. All the way down. Board wave in it. Yep. Yeah. And then you wouldn't think in between a three or four foot area, but it'll do it between every one of them. It sure will. And you cannot get that out. Once it's there, it's there. It's there. Yep. Well, here we are. Sitting on the poplar, we've got it all stacked out here now, and it's beautiful lumber. I mean, just downright gorgeous. Uh, well, only the best. Yeah, but only you, the best for Mr. Danny at Deep South yeah, Homestead. Yeah, but you hate to put this stuff on a barn. Yeah, I know, <laughs> I know. You know me and my woodworking, man, I just yeah. hate to put that on a barn. I'm sitting there going like, God, I could make some kind of furniture out of that, but... Uh, but well, that's, a, that's one of the reasons that I brought a couple pieces of the, the catalpa. Ah, uh, yeah, and that is beautiful. So, I'd like to talk a little bit about the catalpa. Yeah. So for my my benefit, catalpa, C-A-T-A-L-P-A. Yeah. It's spelled different than it sounds a lot of times. Yeah. A lot of people call it a catalpa tree. Right. Here in the deep south, this is called, basically it's an ornamental shade tree. That's what a lot of folks have planted in their yard for a shade tree. And in the spring, it has the beautiful blue Bloom, blooms. The big white blooms. And then yes, the and beans. the violet, they change colors yeah. a little bit. But for the the purpose is for that worm, that yes. Catawba worm. And I'm going to let you know a little hint, a little secret. And that's one thing about us older folks, and we talk about how we try to pass it on down to our knowledge and this right. and that. So here's one for you. Take that worm, when you get them off of the tree, throw them in a pot of boiling water, 60 seconds, and they'll puff up, they'll swell up, yeah. roll them in meal, put them in the freezer best catfish bait ever invented it won't come off the hook once you put that oh yeah on i hook, know that yeah you gotta let that thing dry for a week and then take a knife and whittle it off that hook yep. after it's over. <laughs> <laughs> that i know for sure <laughs> i've set a many a trot line with them things done that way so on my other visit when we were, i was here before uh we you hinted on a kindred spirit that we have right and so i think i want to expand on that just a little bit okay and I'm going to use the catalpa, for example. All right. So it is catalpa, and I spelt it. And it's uh, a lot of people call it catawba. And it's often been said for many, many years that the catawba Indian tribe named it catawba from the catawba Indian tribe. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not necessarily factual. So the catawba Indians are mainly from South Carolina. That was their region. Really? Yes. The Muscogee, I believe is the way you pronounce it, the Creek Indians. Creek Indians, yes. So they're basically in Georgia, mm -hmm. uh, Alabama, and Florida. So that's where the name Catawba came from, the Muscogee Indians. Okay. So that goes back to a little bit of lineage behind what we're talking about, a kindred spirit, because I know from the Smoky Mountains and the mm -hmm. Cherokee background that you have, and I've got... DNA from Cherokee, you know, a right. long time ago. And it all goes back to a piece of wood that we can make a connection with and share that it's more than just a piece of wood. Yeah. There's a, what would this world be like if there weren't any trees? Well, we couldn't live. We, we wouldn't even be here. We wouldn't even be here. We couldn't breathe. <laughs> it's a true story. True story. Yeah. 
but that's that's basically the background on the Catawba that I'm aware of of where the name came from because even a lot of folks told me, oh, the Catawba Indians named that. Well, that was often uh, thought of, but that wasn't actually factual. Muskogee, the Creek Indians yeah. is where, where that actually came from. Yeah, now, I know as a, as a kid growing up, my father talked about working in the river swamps where lots of timber like this growed in the river swamps to be large trees. And, you know, down here, they don't get that big anymore. The ornamental ones that you see in people's yards are, are randomly standard around eight, eight to ten inches is probably the largest you see. Mm -hmm. Up where you're from, I mean, what kind of the diameter farther, do y'all look? That's, that's exactly right. The farther north you go, the larger this tree gets. Like we're talking about the ornamental shade around in the, in the south is yeah. 20 to 30 feet. The farther north you go, it's going to be up to about 100 feet, 80 to, Anywhere from 70 to 100 feet the farther north you go. In my area, about 70 feet. They're going to be two to four foot across the stump. Big wow. trees. Gosh. And here's another fact that you're probably not going to find in the book. But you cut this tree down, it'll scab over and another one will grow. Now, is it like the sycamore? Like the sycamore. That continues to That's make right. it? Yes. <laughs> in, in some places, it's an invasive. Yes. Uh, considered an invasive species. Yeah, a lot of the timber companies I worked with went back into the wet areas and they planted sycamore, cottonwood, and these types of things in there and the, and the, and the catawba because once it's harvested, they didn't have to go back and replant. That's right. It regrew itself. It regrew itself and it would grow several trees in place of one. That's right. You know. That's right. And the same thing, the same thing with poplar. So poplar is considered a straight grain yes. lumber. And catawpa is considered a straight grain lumber. Mm -hmm. Now, as we was talking about on the cedar, I'm looking for the character when I'm yeah. looking, when I'm reading that log and I'm situating that log before I begin that cut. So you look at it and you say, well, how's that straight grain? Well, it actually is. It's a straight grain, but in the catawpa, it has a lot of figure in it. Yeah. And so that's what really shows up. And I love the catawpa. It's highly rot resistant. Now, it has a little odor to it, a little chemical odor yeah. to it. You might want to, when, for woodworkers, you might want to wear a mask when you're planing this or yeah. sanding on it. That can be irritable. Yeah. But that's like a lot of them. Well, uh, cedar's uh, that way with a lot of people. Um, uh, a, lot of your, a lot of your woods are that way. They have a, that are rot resistant because they have natural oils. They have the natural them. oils and chemicals yeah. naturally that, that, that pre preserve it. Yes. Um, another thing about... Uh, um, I, I got so many comments. Let me tell you this. So, on my, my previous visit, guys, your viewers are outstanding. Before I got home, I had <coughs> four or five <laughs> <laughs> views on my website. And I had so many people commenting about that uh, I should start a YouTube channel and this and that. And I've gave a lot of consideration. And so I'm working on that. And I, I believe I may have one that already has a video up there. I'll have to check before I want to get back home. But the knowledge of this lumber and yeah. and homesteading and everything that you talk about, oh my goodness, if you can get it recorded, it's the legacy. Yes, it's it the is. legacy when you and I are not here anymore. Yeah, you know, hopefully with these will still be around in somebody's computer if nothing else. Yeah. All right. And, for my family, the ones, you know, I have my son's off in Florida in college, mm -hmm. and he's not around the middle. He does help, but uh, I don't know what his plans will be after college. Mm -hmm. And so in order to, like a group that we know very well called Alabama, yep, we want to pass it on down. Yeah. That's it. Well, we, what we're doing is we're archiving our life for the and generations I never, to come. I didn't mean to cut you off, but I really never thought about that a lot until I got home and saw my ugly mug on, on <laughs> YouTube, but, but, but I, I, I gave a lot of thought and, and I, your viewers, I, I had so many comments and, and I appreciate every one of them. I really do. And I, I tried to get, I'm sure, I'm pretty sure I answered everybody, but if I didn't, if I missed you, I apologize, send it back. I'll do it again. <laughs> but, uh, that's, that's one of the things that, that uh, the interest popped up for uh, a YouTube channel. Mine is going to be Hills Mill Homestead. And of course, I don't have a homestead like you have, but I've been watching you for a couple of years because right. I've been learning. Yeah. And it's all life is a journey. 
learn as you go. It's all it's all a journey. Now I've seen some pictures of your place that you sent. Now it's it's fantastic. Your what gardening you're doing is out of this world. I am very limited on my space. I have to almost build a garden space. Well, you're kind of. I mean, most <laughs> people don't realize that about realize that about Deep South Homestead. There's nothing level here. True. Yeah, and I'm, I'm pretty sure where you're at, it's even worse. It, it's a little worse because I, <laughs> I had to just about move all the dirt to make anything level. Yeah. But it goes back to raised bed garden. It does. I mean, my goodness. And, you know, like this, when we get a little older, it's a lot better to stay off of our knees and sit yeah. down on our ground. It's a lot better to do this right here exactly. than it is to get way down yard. I saw your video on Miss Wanda's little greenhouse. I'll call it Miss Wanda's yeah. little greenhouse. <laughs> and you were talking about building some shelves yes. for everything. Well, this might be something you might consider. That might be to it. use in there because yeah. it's it's going to be fine if it gets wet and you know and dirty. That and is a very uh, yeah, and it's five quarter, so mm -hmm. it's heavy enough. It's a little thicker than than, yep. than the the poplar. Yeah, so that is that is more that could than be considered light. for that. That is more, and it's ten foot. Yep. Well, no, no this is eight, eight foot. foot. I don't need it to be ten foot. I need it to be eight foot, be eight eight foot. foot because right. I needed a space at the end down there. I think that problem's just been solved. <laughs> You're welcome, Miss Wanda. <laughs> now he has another project. Now I have That's another right. project. <laughs> On top of making me something out of this poplar besides a barn. Yeah. yeah we'll, we'll try to get some more down here ah. if we can find a few more logs. You know. It is what it is right now. But we'll there, there's something else that I'd like to, to, to mention on here that came from your your subscribers okay. that sent me so many messages. Right. And a lot of them were familiar with a sawmill, and a lot of people were asking me what I did about bugs. and bees and ah, this and that yeah and i think i had mentioned in in the other video that i do spray this lumber i spray it with a product that's human and pet safe once it's yeah. dry so you don't have to worry about the bugs in the property and in, in, in the actual lumber right but as far as bees are are concerned and i think you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna share this with me so my grandmother passed it down to my mother they're both gone god rest their soul I'm going to pass this down to anybody that doesn't know this, and I'm sure that you know this, yeah. but folks, when a bee lands on you, it doesn't matter what kind of a bee it is, hold your breath. Just hold your breath. Just hold your breath. Your pores close. They're, now, I'm not going to say that this is scientific proof, but you can certainly check it out the best right. you can. Research it. Yes. It has a lot to do with if you automatically, when a bee lands on me, I just automatically mm -hmm. stop breathing. Yep. I'll look for that bug and I'll flip him off. Now, a lot of the reasons they're attracted to you is because we're exhaling, exhaling. Carbon, yeah. dioxide. carbon dioxide. Yes. And so that's what's attracting them to begin with. Now, this may not work for every bug, but I'm here to tell you, hold your breath. Don't freak out. Yep. You freak out, that thing's gonna sting you every, every time. time. But it has a lot to do with either holding your breath and you're not expelling the carbon dioxide and you're not jittery. And it's not freaking out the bug, but uh, or the bee. But uh, that's something I wanted to share. I had some a lot of a lot of comments about what I do with bees. I'll also say this: scorpions. Mm. Woo! I have opened a cedar log and three inch scorpions just come running out of it. Oh wow! True story. They're in wow. Tennessee. Man, see, um. you never know what it is. It's just absolutely. I think we touched on it before about. It, this is in our DNA, and yeah. and and for a lot of the viewers, it's the same for it's them. It's the same for a lot of them, yeah. But we we care a little farther, yeah. And it's just there's just so much to learn about a, a tree, and like we were talking about, if it weren't for trees, we wouldn't even be here to begin with. True. And I think the the last time that I researched it, I believe there's eighteen thousand products made from a tree, and that's not counting woodworking. Wow. So, so I'm just trying to get in the corner of that little market. <laughs> I'm going to go back to the... Okay. Yeah, you're talking about the bees. That's one thing my father used to never could understand about me when we were logging. Well, we were especially working around a river swamp or something. Though, you'd always cut a gum tree down every so often. That, and that hollow part in them gum trees would have bees it's in them. full of them. be full of honeybees. And I'd always take a machine and lay that thing off out to the side somewhere in that afternoon. I'd go out there and take a chainsaw and cut that thing up. Bees going everywhere. Whole crews running and getting away. <laughs> I'm out there in the middle of them bees sawing that stuff up. There's three things that I knew about bees. One is what you just said. 
While I'm working with them as much as possible, I'll hold my breath. Secondly, the vibration of that saw, they can't hear the queen. Yep. And then the smoke coming off of the exhaust system in it calmed calm them all down, and nobody would ever get that. Well, I'd take that chainsaw and sit there, and I'd cut all that gum up. I'd get all the honey. I'd get everybody's lunch boxes, and I'd fill it full of honey Boy. and everything, and, and I'd bring it home. <laughs> so, I mean, what you said about the bees is exactly true. And, and another thing that, that some of the comments that, that I've received about the bees, folks, WD-40 yes. has got so many uses, this way is beyond what the description Way beyond is. taking a loose nut loose. <laughs> but if you have a wasp nest, horn, well, I'm not going to say hornets, because that's, that's a little long distance. It will distance. kill them, it but you got to be quick. You can't get close enough right. to do it, yeah. But you take WD-40 and you spray a wasp, it drops. Yep. You buy the best on the market bee spray, and when you spray them, they fly away. They fly away, and then they go off out there, and they just the wings and if, melt or whatever happens. And after if you're that. if you're not lucky, they're gonna fly away on, on you. As soon as they hit you, they'll hit the you. They'll nail you. Sure yep. will. That's just true. But, um, WD forty has lots of different. I mean, you, it's actually good for humans. I mean, it was actually created for humans, I believe. Well, it, it has fish oil. Yeah, that's one of the things for. A lot of people talk about for their joints, for their, they, joints, their they, knees, yeah. and they rub it in religiously. Yes. Yeah. So I've heard that for years. I have years. too. I have too. Yes. And and another tip, homestead tip, I guess you may call it, but like we were talking about before, I free range my chickens. Yes. I've got about a couple dozen or whatever. Right. And I let them free range, and you know there's there's three hawks that are after those chickens. Yes, you're correct. <laughs> But I've got, and I read this long time ago. Actually, I think it came from the, maybe the Mennonites. I believe the Mennonites told me this years ago. Mm -hmm. And this is another one of those tips you're yeah. not going to find in a book. Color plays a big part in it, though, doesn't it? True okay. story. <laughs> so I have the Australort roosters. The black ones. The black ones. Yes. And for a hawk, a nemesis or a bad boy, for a hawk is a crow. Uh -huh. And if, as you know, a crow's got that green sheen in its feathers. Yes. The same thing with the black Australort roosters. They have that green sheen. Yes. And true story, my, I've, I've been free range of where I'm at now for about three years. Yes. Never had an issue with a hawk. Now, I've lost one to a coon and a possum, mm -hmm. but no issues with a hawk. And I'll watch the hawks when I see them or hear them. Right. And they'll fly around and make a couple of circles and they're gone. That's it. So that's just another tip. Mm -hmm. I hope that uh, but you put somebody a, might benefit. But you put a white chicken out there and they'll get them every time. A white chicken is a target. Is a, a target. target every a time. Hawk. I mean, yeah. I don't care. He's going to get that white chicken every time. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> right. Absolutely right. Yes. Um, another thing that I had thought about on my drive down here. <laughs> so we, we keep touching on this, trying to pass it down. And, uh, yeah. you know, George Jones had a beautiful perfect song um who's gonna feel who's their gonna shoes? Feel my shoes yes yeah. so in the cherokee the cherokees say it like this mm -hmm. that when they're trying to pass on their traditions and pass it on down right that they want to keep adding a spark and they want to continue to add a spark and and i hope that that's what we're doing is we're adding a spark and eventually it's going to become a flame yes and if enough people keep making that flame grow, it's going to be, build a bed of coals. Yes. And it's going to always be around. So, you know, we're pretty close to the same age, Mr. Danny. You know, we're not going to live forever. I'm not going to live forever. No. Uh, I, I, I hate it, but I know that to be true. Well, I've, nobody's know. ever escaped it yet. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. But I sure appreciate having you, you guys let me come down here for another visit. Bringing you some more lumber. Oh, we appreciate and that. The, the conversation we have is unreal. It's I mean, unreal. not going to find this anywhere no, else. No, no, and then what we talk about off camera, especially, you're yeah. not going to find anywhere else. I mean, this is just. I, you'll probably never know what it means to Wanda and me. You know. Um, oh, I, I'm leaving my legacy. I'm leaving my legacy here <laughs> at Deep South Homestead, and this and there was a, a, a few more comments from. Uh, your wonderful subscribers that took me two or three days to get all of them answered. Yeah. They uh they had mentioned about how they'd like for you to come visit their homestead. Uh-huh. 
And if I would come to their homestead, now I could do this if you order some lumber. Yeah. <laughs> but I could come to their homestead for a visit and bring my phone and you could zoom their homestead. Oh, I could do that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we could but do that, that. That might take a lot of time away from everything That's going to take a lot of time away from the meal and, you know, yeah. a lot of what else we're doing. But I'm always open for suggestions, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, the the YouTube channel that I'm that I'm having a lot of help with and trying to get going. So I hope to extend on that and, and to bring a few more of these hints. And it's things, you know, it was passed on down when we were young if we were smart enough to listen. If we paid attention. That's right. And Yeah. A lot of times today, you know, people are in such a big hurry and that microwave, you know, da, 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 is instant. And they don't pay attention. We uh, we were in, in Hattiesburg last night, right at dark. And uh, Juan and I were picking up some cups and tumblers and stuff like this that another subscriber is making for us, uh, Adonai Graphics. And we were sitting there looking at all the traffic everywhere. And we're not we're not used to that. You know, we're, we're down here... By ourselves. Yeah, you don't yeah. hear a lot of traffic. You don't hear, you have more traffic up above you right. than you do anywhere else. And we were sitting there looking at <coughs> all of the hundreds and hundreds of cars, bumper to bumper, for miles, just everywhere. And I told one I said, I just pray an EMP doesn't happen right now. I said, because, boy, if we did, it'd be stuck right in the middle Danny of Danny would have a, a duck fit. I don't have that <laughs> many bullets with me. <laughs> It's, and it's sad to have to think about that, but I you, mean, better, yeah. you better think about it because you want to yeah. be prepared if it does happen. If it does happen, yeah. If you don't think about it, you're not preparing for anything. I mean, we had blankets in the car. We always go prepared because sure. you know, it was cold. We had blankets and things like that, you know, candles and different things like that. But, uh, you know, the world that we live in today is just not like it used to be. We're, not, and it's never going to go back to what we... You know, no. just ten a decade ago. Just a decade yeah. ago. Yeah. It's never going to go back. You and I have seen things in our life that the generations coming up behind us will never get to experience. Well, they wouldn't believe it if we told them. This is true. And, and you, they just wouldn't lie. They'd look at you and go, no, and there's no can, way. Can I see that on YouTube? No, you're not going to no. find that on YouTube. No, you're no. not. So, speaking of YouTube, and, and I really appreciate you let me on your channel. Oh, that's oh, we love and, it. Yeah, and I like to remind folks that if you want to to send me a message, you can go to my website hillsmill.com, and now I'm entertaining the idea of a a YouTube of a channel. channel. Yes. yes, and I've got a video up. I believe it's supposed to be up now or maybe next day or two. Hills Mill Homestead, and so. If you guys would like to check it out, I, I would appreciate anyone that wanted to, to oh, come yeah. and check it out. Definitely, I, I think yeah, I think that y'all should check it out because. And are you going to be showing the sawmill and the I'm gonna, I'm gonna, lumber? I'm going to do do both of it. I'm going to do a little bit of the homesteading that I know about and some tips and this and that. Okay. And it's going to be a lot about lumber. Hey man. And it's even going to go into the building. You know, if uh, folks want to send me some. Questions about building. I don't know everything. I'm a master carpenter. Been right. that way for long. I don't have that degree, but I got the knuckles to show it. That's what I, I got you the know, scars. And I, I've I, been building like you. I've been building for a long time. Yep. Well, it, the crazy thing about it is the world that we live in today is like me. I mean, my name's on that little signature on that piece of paper, you know. Yeah. But. I know a lot of other people's names who's on that little piece of paper who don't know diddly squat. Yes, they just, <laughs> it just was handed to them. Yep, they just you went know, in and paid the fee and took the test. And, that's right. And they think now they know and it all. It's like we were talking about earlier when we would hire somebody new to come yes. out on a job. Yes, yes. And the first thing you do is you look and they've got yep. on a belt with brand new tools. All new tools. And you look You at know them. right away yep. that they are not a carpenter. <laughs> you know right and, off the bat. It's like, <laughs> this is another, this is a true story now. I have to tell this. When I moved to central Mississippi, I was up amongst people up there that wore overalls everywhere. Now, I've wore overalls my whole life. But they were all new people that I'd never met before. I didn't want to go in my old raggedy, old dirty overalls. So I told my wife, I said, give me a better pair of them overalls than a newer pair. And I put them on. When I got there, they started making fun of me. And they're going like, okay, city boy. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> no, nice no. Clothes <laughs> on out there. Got new overalls on. Like, we talking about yeah. the new tools. And no, 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 no. Yeah. I, I told him, I said, I promise you, 
I've been wearing overalls since I was a kid, you know. And, and you I just want to make a good impression. I just want to make know? a good impression. But half of them, <laughs> the buttons was undone on the sides and all this kind of stuff, you know. And and, and they, I told them, I said, because the first thing that gave away was what I smelt. Yep. I was sitting there, I was like, and they said, what? I said, chitlins? Woo. And they said, yeah. He said, Woo. you eat chitlins? I said, well, under certain circumstances. I said, how were they cooked? I said, were they boiled for about 20 minutes first? And then fried real crisp afterwards. I said, if they did that, I'll eat them. I said, but now if they still gummy and chewy, yeah, no, I like the fluffy ones. Yeah, yeah. I told them I said no, and they go, okay, you might be for real, country <laughs> city boy. You might know a little bit about <laughs> yeah. what you're saying. <laughs> oh, oh but anyway, it's always good to have fun with with Mickey when he comes here. You know, I mean, it's, yeah, that's always and, a blessing. And I can remember my grandmother saying this, you know, long time ago about. Well, my husband, you know, the only time he ever wore his new overalls, he had one pair. Yep. And he wore them on Saturday when he went to town. Uh -huh. And he'd sit around up there with a wagon and he'd sell his vegetables, pumpkins, yep. watermelons and all that. Yeah. He'd come home, he'd take them overalls off and put them back in the closet. Right. Yeah, and put on your work clothes. Put your work clothes. But it's, it is. It's about a good impression. But what we were talking about. When you show up on a job with new clothes and new tools, new tools that's usually a dead you know, that's giveaway. That's a red flag and it's all over you. It's all <laughs> over, man. That's like I was telling Nikki when I was in the logging business, a guy I would say, Look, man, uh, can you cut timber down? Oh, I know all about cutting trees down. I'd mm -hmm. run a chainsaw, I can do this. I'd, I'd, I'd take it right off the back of the truck and lay it in his hands. I said, There's a tree right there. I'm going to cut it down. Mm -hmm. And the way he cranked the saw and the way he stuck it to the tree would tell me you, within you the first, automatically. I, I would either stop him. Or I'd let him go. You know, I mean, I knew instantly. One more thing I'd like to add, Mr. Denny. So, on our on my other visit, we talked mm -hmm. about me being from around Grinder Switch and yeah. Minnie Pearl. Yeah, Minnie Pearl, and yeah. the first, I believe Minnie Pearl is the first uh, lady comedian. Lady comedian, yes. So, I'd like to talk about a comedian that's that you, I'm sure, are very aware of from the great state of Mississippi. Somewhere around Yazoo, Mississippi. Or just outside of Yazoo. Named yeah. Jerry, Jerry Clyers. Yep. <laughs> what what was his favorite one? Uh, coon hunting. Coon hunting. Woo! Woo! Knock, Knock him out, out John! John. <laughs> I actually oh, went Lord. to his hometown, his uh uh which was uh what was it at? I worked at there, uh, Liberty, Mississippi, which yep. is uh just That's outside the, of the university where the yep. university's at. Uh, I went there and uh, I did a little work there around where he was actually from. Uh, but I used to, look, there was probably a, no cleaner comedi comedian than Jerry Cloud. True story. And even today, everything that, it, not everything, but you go back and listen to him. I don't know oh, if you, yeah. I don't know if you can find him on a DVD or a I, CD. You, I, don't I still you got can. my cassette tapes. Yeah, I think so. I don't know But my can, goodness, his, his jokes were just barely rolling. All the lead bears. Barely rolling. <laughs> Oh, I can't even remember all the Leadbetters. Oh, yeah. I, I can't Ooh, even remember all the Leadbetters. But, I mean, Marcel. Marcel with the oh, chainsaw. Well, all those stories yep. that he tell. And sometimes on a Friday evening, we talked about before, about cleaning up a job at the end of the yep. week and this and that. And I would, I'd put in one of the Jerry Clara tapes. Yep. And I said, when this tape is off, I want it done. Yep. And everybody, you know, we'll just have a good time. Exactly. You, you have to enjoy what you do. You do. You, you don't really want to do. make it, you know, I mean, everybody has a bad day. And you gotta, you know, you gotta compensate for that as you have to. But yeah, that, you try a, to have a good time when you're working. You there, there's a certain amount of rigidity that has to happen on a job. Absolutely. But then there's that time, you know, where it's got to be it's done. It's just got to be done. It's got to be done. No matter yeah. if it's raining, no, it, it just has to be done. Yeah. You know, and 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 I, I guess people like Jerry Clowers, we was talking about, you know, you just don't have anybody that gets into their stories people like he did i mean and the expression and, and i believe most of his stories were a lot of true. Them were probably <laughs> true stories knowing yeah. the kind of people that he came from yeah. up in that area up and it were probably true stories and and the way that he expressed himself with a how you know what was, i mean <laughs> his signature his, his signature, signature yeah, yeah. Uh, oh. all those type things i mean we don't have that anymore it's gone i know it's it's just gone. It's 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 fading away until it's just all. It's going to be gone, you know, in a few years and a few decades, hopefully, yep. that we can linger it out. But, Mister Danny, I sure appreciate this visit. 
I'm going to be heading back to Tennessee. I've got to get busy making some more sawdust. I hear you. I'm going to have you another load just as soon as possible. Well, we're looking. I may even bring another piece of lumber or something to talk about. That's good. That's good. Yeah, we'll. Uh, we'll You'll find a project for it, I'm sure. I, I will find something <laughs> for it. Now, that's one of the th another thing before we get off of here. One thing that most of the old tiny homesteaders knew was what timber grew next to them and what every use of that timber was. Utilize every piece of, of that tree. For a chair, for instance. A a, tra a chair, a lot of times would have two to three different woods in it, for the different for the strength. different strength areas That's of right. a chair. And a and a good homesteader made his own chairs back in the Absolutely. day. Absolutely, and he knew which piece of wood went where in that chair. For structural purposes. That's absolutely true. You can't just take oak and make a whole yeah, chair out of it. Yeah, it'd be so heavy you won't take it You couldn't around, move it around yeah. if you did. True Maple story. was used a lot, a lot in making chairs. Yes, sir. Uh, but oak did have its place in a chair. Absolutely. Hickory had its place the in a chair. And the, yeah. the arms and all that. Yeah. Yeah. All these different woods had places in them. For and that's that's one of the things that I just love it. I do. I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's in my DNA. It's in yep, your DNA. It's in my DNA. Yeah. And you know, we. I just want to learn. You know, yeah. anything that I don't know, I'm 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 open to trying to, to learn. Yeah. And I mean sitting here looking at this lumber, now a lot of people may not I know y'all may not know this and you might know. You might know it, I don't know. I don't see your bandsaw marks on this. That's, that's a trick. <laughs> that's a trick. It's I a knew trick. it. When I looked at it, looked, it really I looked is. and I said And that's what I I talked about before is I'm not a production mill. I'm not a production mill. Right. I'm a woodworker's sawmill. Yeah. Now this is a pretty big order that uh, I'm going to bring you when it's all over said yeah. and done. But that's okay. But I'm still sawing it like woodworking like I yeah. normally do. Yeah. And you're absolutely, you have an eye. You have an eye. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely true. Where's the yeah. marks at? Where's the band saw marks at? <laughs> there's, no, there's no saw marks. There's yeah. no circular. I mean, and I, I, knew, you, I knew you wasn't using circular saw, but I mean, I knew you had one. But I looked at this and I kept going, I don't see the band saw marks, you know. And I have to say about wood miser. Um, I've, I've had mine for about seven or eight years, and without a doubt, Wood Miser is probably oh, I would uh, agree. it's the best. I would it's the best band yeah. meal out there. I would agree with that. Yeah. And and another thing, I hope it's okay to mention Greenstalk. Oh yeah. So I used your code, and I think yeah. I saved thirty something dollars. I ordered two. Yeah. And I'm hoping that uh, Miss Wanda is going to give me some tips over <laughs> on the Greenstalk one day. <laughs> But I've got two yeah. of them, and I want to. Yeah, I'm gonna try the green stalks. I tell you year. what, people would be surprised what you can do in those things. That's what I'm looking forward to. It's amazing. Uh, we don't show half of what we do with ours, you yeah. know. Uh, but um, it's 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 just it's another it's another one of those things. It's a learning process to figure Learn out. Learn as you go. Life you know, is a dance. Yep. Learn as you go. This is true. Well, guys, I know this has probably been a little bit longer video than we normally make. But, you know what? Go check out Mickey's channel, um, Hills Mill Homestead, and show some support. Show some love over there, you know? And, and check out, I, I mean, you sit here listen to us, you know the guy's got the knowledge. So go check out his videos, uh, give him thumbs up, put him in the algorithm, help him to hurry up and get up there, and um, just make it happen, because you guys are what made it happen for us. And if you did it for us, I know you can do it for him. And I sure would appreciate each and every, and your comments, if, if you can subscribe and hit that like button. Yes. This is new to me, but you're getting I'm the, learning. You're getting the lingo. <laughs> Come on, you're getting the lingo. But I sure appreciate it. I appreciate everything that you and Miss Wanda have done. And I'm I'm really happy to bring you some lumber oh, and to is, share it, to share is, with everybody. Yeah, this, this right here. I'm just hoping that from the process of doing this, to be honest with you, my end goal is for your production to go up. That's Not too much, yeah, but, but it going up is fine with me. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I think I mentioned before, I'm not into this to get rich. I don't think I could ever get rich I, if I wanted to. But I love what I do, and if I could pay my bills and share the love with a little, you know, spread it around, that's what I'm all about. Well, I can say this with all certainty. I have to... Watch what I say about this particular thing right here now. Uh, there's a certain day this month that 
trade is fixing to change. And I sampled that this morning. And when trade changes, guys like you have got to fill that gap because the borders are fixing to shut. Yes, sir. And certain products are not going to get back into this country. A lot country. of products that have been coming in that you don't even think about, they're yep. fixing to be shut off. And one of them is what you're doing right here. Absolutely. And people like you, I'm hoping that people that's watching this video will go check out Mickey's place there and give him the business instead of paying it to another country. You know. You're right. Oh my lord. Yeah. So oh. that I wanted to throw that in there. I had to be I had to watch my wording on that because we get rules with you two. Um, and you'll you'll yeah. quickly figure them out. There's Ooh. rules or they'll shut you down like snapping your finger. Um, so guys, I wanted to I wanted to throw that out there. Give Wiki, uh, Mickey the, the the business because when it shuts down and we can no longer get it, there's guys like him that have American made stuff <laughs> from America that's good quality stuff. If you're building a homestead, building a barn, building whatever, uh, furniture, something for your place, go check him out. Use him instead of using foreign countries. So thank you guys from Deep South Homestead.